Welcome to the Tanya Hoffman's Fabulous TV Show. I am Tanya Hoffman. This is my Fabulous TV Show. And I am so excited to introduce y'all today, one of my fabulous guests. Because you know, I have always fabulous people on my show. And Dr. Deb Sandella Sandella, um, is on. Hey, Deb. Hi, Tanya. (laughs) (laughs) So we're going to hear from her and she's got a new book out. I'm so excited about it. I can't wait to get my copy. I was like, "Ah, I gotta get my copy in my mail. And, um, and we're going to have a lot of fun just chatting and finding out all kinds of interesting things about emotions. And, you know, don't we all have that each day? You're like one moment we're like, Ooh, and then the next minute we're like, yay. So we're going to talk about all kinds of things and get into it. Um, Also, I am the CEO and founder of the Public Speakers Association. What? You haven't found out about that yet? So go to the website, Public Speakers, with an S, association, all spelled out, dot com. And we've got until the end of 2016, so you have all this year, but don't wait. You could jump in at the featured speakers level. Okay? Get all the marketing, all the exposure, all the practice, everything, and a free ticket to the Public Speakers Conference in 2017 in Vegas, June 24th through the 25th. So we want to definitely have you there and have fun. So just put in conference free 2017 in the coupon code. All right. All right. So let's get into things. So I know when you meet someone amazing, I just like, Ah! And so when I heard that Deb had her new book out, and I've been wanting to have her on my show anyway, so I pulled her leg and said, please be on my show. And so here she is. So Deb, tell us a little bit about you and how fabulous you are. Oh, well, (laughs) nobody's ever asked me that before. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's about time. (laughs) Well, thank you, Tanya. Well, I live in Denver, Colorado, and uh, I've lived here for about 40 years with my husband. I have two grown children who are in other places, other states, and I have uh, started my first 20 years working as a psychotherapist and uh, really got pretty burned out, had a real kind of transformational experience and then shifted, closed my practice and decided I needed to explore something new and different. And so really the last 20 years, uh, that's what that's been about. And it's really resulted in this book. That's the culmination of the last 20 years is this book. Wow. 20 years all stuffed into a book. That's amazing. (laughs) (laughs) It is almost 300 pages. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) So I know I, everyone was on social media is just like a buzz about your book and how amazing it is. So can you dive into kind of like the, what's the basis for your book? Well, as a psychotherapist, I've always been dealing with feelings and people's emotional life. However, what happened is I started to pursue looking at who we are, like what we're capable of without having to think about it and analyze it. Like what, what is the capacity within us? So I started uh, moving in the direction of using more and more imagery or imagination because I had taken a couple classes in that. And then over the 20 years, I just set aside what I thought was possible, like what I had learned to expect I set that all aside because I wanted to see what was really possible. And I have been blown away with what we're capable of. I mean, it's just amazing. So the book really is about that. It's about our resourcefulness that we're just not using. And life's a lot easier when we do. Wow. Because I know I see it all the time in speakers, right? They're like, well, I just want to speak at the Rotary and I want to speak at maybe a local, you know, I'm like, why not go out and change the world? And they're like, me change the world? I mean, it's just like mind blowing for people. Right, right. Well, you know, we, we grow up Uh, with particular experiences that cause us to develop a particular way of seeing ourselves. And when we don't test it out, we don't really know what we're capable of. You know, it's like even with taking this book out, it's caused me to stretch into new things that I've never done before. And it is just so exciting. And every new thing I do, first of all, we get uh, serotonin, you know, the mood lifter. 
automatically, whenever we try anything that's new and different, even if we have a bad outcome, it doesn't matter. We still get the serotonin release, a big boost of it. And then there's this new confidence that I made it through. And you, that can't be talked about. You know, you can have all kinds of motivational conversation. It's not the same kind of confidence as having done something and survived it and actually maybe even had great success at it. You know, that's so interesting. I was just thinking about this. I was driving back from Houston. I just went through a huge speaking tour through all of Texas. And so I was driving. There's nothing to do when you're driving back from Houston. <laughs> but to think, and, you know, I felt suddenly this, um, I had just found out that I'm one of the top people in a company called Excellent Choice. And so they do yummy chocolates and, and coffee and skincare. And that's why I look so fabulous. And that great. that was that one moment of, oh my gosh, you know, I, I've been doing stuff, but I didn't know where I was in dynamics of the company. And when I found out, I was like, you do, you kind of get this, this um, surge of pride and, and um, it's a weird feeling, you know, it's not like you're walking around feeling like that all the time. You're just kind of just out doing, you know? <laughs> right, right. Well, what you're really doing is you're changing an identity because we, we can easily get locked into an identity of who we think we are. And, uh, you know, that's really limiting. So the more and more we allow ourselves to actually have no identity and just be in the moment, be present, then what is inside that really wants to express naturally and fully our talents, our natural gifts, then those really flourish and they just show up spontaneously. And that's what you did. That's what's showing up. And then you get to see it. It's like looking in a mirror. You get to see see yourself uh, fully expressive. So how do you, when, because I know with a lot of people, they keep themselves from doing amazing things. So do you have ways like, you know, tricks or something that you can help people start moving? Is that something that you help people with? Yes, it is because what happens is whenever we have experiences that feel traumatic or scary, in that moment, it's very easy, you know, to that uh, fight, flight, faint, freeze. Uh, it's, e it's really easy to either get stuck in a frozen spot with it or to run away from it or to fight it off, you know, and not really absorb it and allow it to become integrated as part of your history. So when that happens, if we don't ever allow it to be integrated, it stays stuck in the body and we forget about it. We don't even know it's there anymore. And so gradually we either start, well, we just stop taking as many risks because there's fear that stuck, you know, that hope, oh, old phrase uh, stuck in your craw there's fear that's stuck in your craw that's invisible and it's causing us unconsciously just to be more uh, cautious and so the work I do actually is through imagination through the body it's a body centered process although it's there's no touch involved it's all verbal is to locate what is the moment that's stuck in time and then once we access it, we know this through the neuroscience, that we can actually unlock that memory, loosen it, and even uh, change it, redo it, and so that we're creating a, a different kind of feeling of confidence and uh, ability to take risks. And that's in the body. That happens in the body. Oh, wow. So this is something you could help with people. You don't, they don't have to be in front of you. They could be over on Skype or Zoom or something, right? Correct. Yes. And actually, I've trained, uh, I've trained facilitators to be able to do the technique with others. So there are people uh, really ar around the world, there are people even in other countries who can do the technique, uh, either in person or over the phone or over Skype. And it's actually very, very effective, because different than most techniques, the facilitator is not the expert. The facilitator is a facilitator to call forth what's there within the person and support them to redo it, to actually have this new uh, experience come out of that. So the client is really doing the work themselves and they know that. And so they feel very empowered by it. And it doesn't actually feel like work. 
because we're, the eyes are closed, you're doing it through imagination. And the imagination, I really think it's in that unused part of the brain we refer to. Because, you know, we think of it as an adult, we kind of say, oh, child's play, which is a mistake. That's what's caused us from really fully embracing that part of us. Right. But it is super powerful. It can do amazing things. So, for instance, let me give you a story. Or do you yeah, have a story? yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> so there was a woman who had been through a very traumatic divorce and uh, was in a new relationship with a man she really liked. And it was starting to have some tension, some issues. So, so we worked together. And first of all, we did do some releasing around the trauma of the divorce. And then we asked, I asked her to ask her imagination to call forth an image that represented uh, the issue in this new relationship, just like that. And it popped in this image of this new boyfriend trying to balance standing on a TV table. <laughs> exactly. Not very safe, is it? Pretty impossible. Wow. And not anything you'd want to do because, first of all, it's like you're, he was restricted to this very small space. She immediately started laughing. And she goes, oh, that's what he's been trying to tell me of what I'm doing. And uh, she understood now what she was doing in the relationship that wasn't working just instantly without us having to have a lot of talk about it. She understood it better than I did. Yeah. Because she was in it and she, it was her uh, imagery. So then we asked for an image of what it would look like if that had changed, if it switched, if it transformed into working well. And then she immediately got an image of the two of them slow dancing, this romantic scene moving as one. And uh, then she moved into that to actually experience it, like to imagine dancing with him in that scene. And it felt so cozy. And most of all, it felt safe. So after divorce, it's really easy to be afraid of being close again and allowing yourself to be vulnerable. And so in those two images, by working with those two images, that happened instantly. So two weeks later, he said to her, what happened to you? You're like totally different. <laughs> so now engaged and getting married. <laughs> so, Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So does this really work with people that have like PTSD and mm -hmm. things like that as well? It does. Now it depends on the, the, that, that was a very, very quick ability to, you know, that was just one session. Right. So many people, if you have, you know, just life, normal life kind of issues that can happen very quickly with very severe PTSD, it may take a number of sessions. And there are some people with very severe PTSD that I'll also uh, find that they need to be on medication in addition to the REM work. However, the combination of those two things changes their lives in ways that you know they haven't you know for 20 30 years they've been suffering and uh, now they're able to actually start experiencing normal joys again with their children uh, they're able to work again so it's quite remarkable what's possible it really is wow so when you're looking at bringing somebody in and they've got, you know, this whatever particular issue that they want to kind of right. cover. Um, do you find that there's certain types of things that don't work with this or is it pretty much kind of helps with anything? Well, it really can help with anything. Uh, I don't recommend anybody who has a mental illness that is, uh, has trouble with reality. Oh. we're imagining so we don't we want to keep those people in reality uh so like uh somebody who's in has mania or psychosis or schizophrenia then i wouldn't recommend it for those folks but other than that it can work with anything and you don't even have to identify what your goal is or what the problem is we just start going in and sensing through imagination sensing the body like what energy is there in the body going, just, you know, sensing it, giving it form, going into it. And then the imagination, actually the creative right brain brings forth a knowing of the issue because the intellectual mind doesn't know. The left brain doesn't do feelings. 
you know, it just doesn't because feelings are too frustrating because they're not measurable, they're not controllable, they're not reviewable. So the left brain doesn't do feelings. But if we use the right creative brain to actually be the leader, then the, right, the left brain comes in to work as a partner. So it you know, brings the words, the interpretations, the meaning, the understanding, which is important. So it really becomes a whole brain process. That's incredible. So when, because I know that, I, you know, especially dealing with people in small business, they've got so many fears. You know, if they're wanting to get out and speak, just trying to get somebody to come on my show, right? They're like, <gasps> I've got to be on video and people are going to see me and hear me and, you know, and I've got to have like a little head thingy on and, you know, they're like, they get all caught up in that, you know, chatter, 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 chatter. And you're like, what is it that's keeping them from doing it? So right. something like this could really help them because they can imagine themselves doing well and everything going great and just having a good time. Exactly. And there may be a moment in time that is stuck in, you know, a fearful moment that is innocuous. It's, it's amazing what shows up sometimes. There was a woman who was actually doing well professionally, but wanted to get married and have children. She was in her early 30s. And uh, the moment she went back to that was stuck in her craw was fifth grade cafeteria line. And a fifth grade boy walks up to her and says, you're ugly. Well, anybody who's been around fifth graders, we know fifth grade boys are kind of like that. Yeah. And, <laughs> and that fifth grade girls are extremely sensitive about how they look at that time. You know, it's a very vulnerable fifth and sixth grade is a very vulnerable time for both boys and girls. So when we went back to that moment and we re-entered that memory, she found out in, like we had her move into him, look out of his eyes. At first she was able to say, uh, that hurt my feelings, uh, which was great because she spoke. She used her voice to protect herself. And then he said, oh, I'm sorry. I did it because I like you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so these are, you know, frequently information is, it comes to light that was not able to be known or looking through our vulnerable, scared eyes. Wow. When you help people through all these different processes, um, it must be a lot for you because I always wonder about people that you're the facilitator of this, how you don't get so caught up in other people's stories. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, it seems like you would take on so much yourself. Well, I think when I was in a psychotherapist, that was a lot easier to do. And of course, as part of your psychotherapy professional training, you learn to be objective as best as you can. So I, you know, we all learn that. So I was objective and yet there still would be times I would get hooked in to the emotional something with the client. And, and I would always know because I had a dream about him. <laughs> So it was always a sign, okay, I need to look at this, you know, if I have a dream. Uh, with REM, R-I-M, um, it's really not that much of an issue because every session we do a piece of work where whatever shows up is, is really redone and regenerated in a new positive way. And, uh, and over, I've been doing this kind of work now for 20 years, so I have absolute trust that the person sitting there, no matter the most terrible, terrible things that have happened to them, that we, that they have within them the ability to actually dissolve that and be present in who they are now today and go forward with a new kind of confidence. So I know that, uh, you know, it's just known at the deepest level of my body now. So uh, it's not hard. Nice. When you're looking at writing your book, I'm sure it was like, well, you know, what parts do I put in there and which stories do I tell and not tell? <laughs> How long did it take you to write your book? Well, I mean, you could say 66 years. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
because that's, you know, it's how old I am. And that's the, uh, it's the culmination, I think, of all of my life experiences, including the psychotherapy and uh, the REM, plus my personal experiences, that they've all contributed to the book. In terms of the actual writing, I uh, spent a year writing the book with a contract, with an agent and got a contract, a publisher contract, took a year to write it, and then it's another year to edit and go through it and keep improving it and redoing it. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's quite a process. But it felt good. I actually was glad to have a publisher because they could see things I couldn't see. So I think it's a much better book because of that. I know when people, you know, the other day I was sitting next to a guy in Starbucks and my lady did, didn't show up and um, he had a book on the, the table and I said, oh, is that your book? And, and um, he goes, no, no, I'm waiting for the author to come. He's going to meet me. I'm like, oh, that's cool. He goes, but I do want to write a book. He goes, I'm trying to find, you know, what do I do? I said, let me tell you, go find a publisher. You know, they'll kick your butt. They'll keep you on track. They'll, because that's what I did with mine. My first book, The Client Today, The Coffee Shop Way. I was trying to muddle through, trying to do it. I had no idea what I was doing. So when I got the publisher, it was like, okay, Tanya, clarity. Let's figure out what you're trying to say. And then it was shocking when I finished how much editing and how much I had to go back and redo and, he goes, do you know you said this same phrase like 14 times? In book? You know? <laughs> right. No, it's amazing. But it's so helpful because uh, a book is really different than speaking to somebody. Uh, you know, when people look at the written form, it's a different relationship. And it just takes a while to be, you know, to really have your own voice show up and then to edit your voice <laughs> so that other people really hear it. <laughs> That's awesome. So in your book, you kind of help people go through this process and kind of learn about the process. I do. I do. And actually, here is the book. I just Yay! saw it. <laughs> so you can, can see it. It's and, beautiful. Uh, oh, thank you. Do you have your pretty picture on the back? No, they actually put the picture in the inside it and it, it didn't come out. But that's the one thing I didn't like. Ah! <laughs> I didn't like how they did my picture, but, you know, that's my ego. So... <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious oh, yeah, it really the book is very much set up uh where there are true life stories the neuroscience uh the practicalities of it and then practice steps for you to actually go through the process yourself or with others so it actually is a great uh for book clubs to do as a group there's like seven chapters and uh you would just have uh, somebody rotate whoever's do you know leading uh, that week and you have it it's all right there it's all right there for you so it's a great discussion yeah great discussion uh, yeah that's amazing <laughs> so how do they get a hold of this incredible book well, it is, uh, it is uh, out there. I actually am doing a, September the 7th is a book launch and uh, where I'm really, you know, asking people to come on board on the 7th uh, so that they can gain 12 bonus gifts from people like Jack Canfield, Marcy Simoff, uh, Dr. Sean Japair, and just 12 wonderful teachers. So if you buy it on September 7th, you can do that, but it's available and everywhere in all bookstores everywhere online um, if you're interested in the bonus uh, then on September 7th go to goodbyehurtandpain.com the name of the book is goodbye hurt and pain so if you go to that.com that day uh, you'll be able to access uh, all of those gifts oh fabulous all right everybody so make sure you write that down go what is it again Go to goodbyehurtandpain.com. Goodbyehurtandpain.com. Is and spelled out? Yes. Okay. It is spelled out. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So make sure you jump on that opportunity on the 7th. And if you're watching this after the 7th, go ahead and get it anyways. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> well, you know, if anybody's really wanting to go out there and get it now, of course they can't. <laughs> Exactly. right now if they're in a moment where it's like i need that book now then uh go for it 
Yeah, yeah. If you're sitting there going, um, yeah, I like to have goodbye, <laughs> hurt and pain. Um, so jump on that opportunity. Uh, so if people, I mean, you also are a speaker, right? You can come out and speak at their next conference, right. like that. Yes, actually, you can just find me, my speaker page, the media page and speaker page is on the website at drdebsandela.com. Perfect. Uh, yes. And so doctor is D-R, then yeah. Deb, D-E-B. Yeah, D-R, D-E-B, and then Sandella. So it's S-A-N-D-E-L-L-A. Perfect. Yeah, so jump, get her on to, if you've got a radio show, you know, help her promote this amazing book. Because can you imagine how many people that you're going to be able to help by just introducing them to Deb? And that's what I just get so excited about, is that I get to go out, meet someone amazing like Deb, that can then go out and change and help my people and other people's people. You know, it's just like this whole wave that's happening around the world. And people are always like, man, the world is awful. I'm like, like, no, I see so much good. I see so much positive. Don't you find that Deb is like, oh my gosh. Completely. Yeah, I really do. And it, you're exactly right, Tanya. It's where you look. Yeah. It's where you look. We can always look and find issues. And then we can also look and find uh, the light and the, the good stuff and the positivism, even in ourselves. I think that's, you know, that's really important is to find the, the good in us because uh, we, can, we can be hard on ourselves. And that self-compassion is so important. I get it totally. So, <laughs> we, there's always moments that, you know, we're like, what am I doing? You know, and sometimes you just need to, to know and connect with people. And that's one of the things I want to suggest with everybody is, have you even followed me on Facebook? Have you followed Deb on Facebook? Have you connected with us? You know, um, are you following us on our email list? You know, this is what I do when I want to get connected to people that make me not that I just want something from, but that I want to feel good, you know, and I love getting connected with people that have forward movement, you know, in their business and their life and their connections and what they're doing for others. So make sure you connect with her. Um, you're probably on all the platforms, right? Deb? I am. Yes, I am. Yeah. So reach out. Is most of yours, Deb Sandel? Sandella on uh, Yes. Well, either that or the REM, R-I-M Institute. And, and I don't remember if I said, but uh, REM stands for Regenerating Images in Memory. Uh, but it's R-I-M, so it's very easy to remember an institute. Uh, yeah, any of those. You could Google any of that and find me. And I, on Facebook, it actually is Dr. Deb Sandella. Most of it is Dr. Deb Sandella. Perfect. And of course, you can find me, Tanya Hoffman, Tanya with an O, Hoffman with one F, two N's, because my husband's family doesn't know how to spell Hoffman, right? So uh, <laughs> just search for me on there. We'd love to get connected and have fun. Um, also reach out and say hello to me. I'd love to help you become a speaker, get out there, change lives, make money. Um, you know, there's this huge movement in the world to really not just hear from the big gurus. People want to hear from real people with real information that can really help them, even if it's just an encouraging word. So if there's anything that I could do for you, you know, I'm here for you and any questions you have, I'd love to help you. Um, and obviously Deb is here for you too. She can help you. If you're like stuck and you're like, I don't know why I have these fears. She can really help you. And that's what I've done in my past. Cause I've got, you know, if you've been robbed and tied up when you're six months pregnant, you've gone through cancer, and those are the nice things that have happened to me, oh my I needed some help <laughs> from people yeah. like them. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so just reach out and get connected and, and have people help you because you could do things like run around the world and changing lives like I do. If I could do it, anybody can. <laughs> Don't you feel like that, Deb? You're like, if I could do it, anybody can do this. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's right. And you're making a great point that you don't have to do it alone. Yes. Because yes. that's important. Yeah. yeah so especially for women. Help. You know, we don't want to reach out and ask for help. So just get over it and do it. <laughs> uh, that's all I can tell you.
Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I definitely want you to come back on the show, Deb, anytime you want to. I'm so excited about your book launch and uh, I'm so honored to be a part of that. And thank you for being on the show. Oh, thank you, Tanya. I'm so honored to be here with you. And, and I just loved being able to share this time together. Perfect. All righty, everybody. Come back next time to hear another incredible, fabulous guest on the Tanya Hoffman's fabulous TV show. Get connected to me. Love to help you. And um, who knows? You may be on my show the next time. So bye. Bye, Deb. Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>